It was the most romantic show on television. Well, most of the time. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Downton Abbey couples, five best and five worst. I've missed you. I haven't stopped thinking about you for one moment. Well, I'm here now. For this list, we're taking a look at five couples on this period drama that made our hearts swoon, and five we'd like to divorce from our memories. Since we'll be discussing the fates of their couples, a spoiler alert is in order. What would you think about it? I must go. They'll be sending out a search party soon. Just rest. Number 5. Worst, Tom Branson and Edna Braithwaite When Sybil tragically passed away, it was hard to imagine Tom with anyone else. So from the second general maid Edna laid eyes on the family's former chauffeur, we were ready to dislike her intensely. I knew you were coming in. And I don't care about all that stuff. While Tom is still visibly grieving, Edna refuses to take no for an answer. When she seemingly schemes her way into Tom's bed, Edna tries forcing him into marriage with an alleged pregnancy, although Mrs. Hughes sees right through the manipulative little witch. It doesn't help that Edna has little respect for Tom, claiming that Sybil could have done better. If you were good enough for Lady Sybil Crawley, then I'm good enough for you. Don't speak her name. Edna even tries to make him feel guilty for moving up in the world, even though that's exactly what she's trying to do by blackmailing Tom. Number 5. Best – Robert and Cora Crawley It may be a place of tradition, but Downton Abbey experiences numerous changes as the years go by. Even as the winds of change blow through the halls, Robert and Cora remain a constant. <laughs> Don't worry about me, I'm an American, I have gun with travel. God for you. Robert's social status and Cora's dowry largely brought them together, but they'd go on to develop one of the show's most affectionate marriages and dedicated partnerships. Granted, they've experienced relationship hurdles, most notably when Robert nearly consummated his affair with housemaid Jane. These moments of weakness are fleeting, however, as Robert reminds himself how much he loves and respects his wife. Through Cora's generosity and understanding nature, Robert is often reminded that nothing is more important than family. You simply can't have Downton Abbey without the Earl and the Countess of Grantham. Two people who love her and each other very much on either side. I only hope I can say the same when my time comes. Number 4. Worst – Ethel Parks and Major Charles Bryant He's handsome. Handsome and off-limits. You could say that Ethel is a modern woman who wants more out of life, but you could also say that she's an ungrateful brat who believes service work is below her. When the wounded Charles Bryant is being treated at Downton, Ethel irresponsibly shacks up with him. Ethel should have heeded Mrs. Hughes' warnings, as her fling with Charles results in a pregnancy. To make matters worse, Charles turns out to be a scoundrel who refuses to take responsibility for their baby, and is killed in action shortly after abandoning Ethel. Mrs. Hughes. The last thing I'd wish to be is rude, but in this case I really must be left to my own devices." While we come to empathize with Ethel as she struggles to support herself and her son, she serves as a cautionary tale for anyone who rushes into a relationship with someone they barely know. Number 4. Best – Charles Carson and Elsie Hughes Despite not being together for a majority of the series, Carson and Hughes have always acted as the paternal figures of Downton's staff. As the years go by, it becomes progressively evident that this butler and head housekeeper are in love with each other. Since both have been married to their jobs for so long, though, they keep matters professional. Yet you'd swear these two were already married when they hold hands on the beach at the end of Series 4. We're getting on, Mr. Carson, you and I. We can afford to live a little. It takes another year for Carson to finally confront his feelings, proposing to Hughes as if they'd been dating for years. Hughes accepts without giving it a second thought, showing that it's never too late to find love. I thought you'd never ask. Number 3. Worst – Lady Edith Crawley and Antony Strallen I don't suppose you'd take me? Of course. I should be delighted. Sure, Edith and Strallen are far from the most toxic couple on the show. While some took issue with their age gap, their love seemed genuine and we were glad to see Edith in good spirits for a change. Then their wedding day arrived. At the altar, Antony tells Edith that she'd be squandering her life by staying with him and he walks away. I can't let you throw away your life like this. What do you mean? We're so happy, aren't we? 
It's debatable whether or not these two would have been happy in the long run, but Antony really should have brought this to Edith's attention earlier, like literally any time before the ceremony. Even if their relationship wasn't without its moments, the public humiliation Antony subjects Edith to puts a sour taste in our mouths whenever we look back on their time together. Number 3. Best – Lady Sybil Crawley and Tom Branson Bet on me. And if your family cast you off, it won't be forever. They'll come around. The youngest Crawley daughter was also the most modern, embracing everything from the changing fashion to forward-thinking political movements. Above all else, Sybil knows that wealth and social status aren't what defines a person's worth. She immediately looks past Tom's chauffeur uniform to see a nobleman willing to fight for what he believes. Tom, meanwhile, couldn't give two cents about Sybil's money, falling in love with her passion and devotion. Yes, you can kiss me. But that is all until everything is settled. For now, God knows it's enough that I can kiss you. Of course, most of the other Crawleys aren't so open-minded, with Robert initially condemning the relationship. Knowing that nothing can keep them apart, however, he eventually comes to accept the union. Their love story is nevertheless one that ends in tragedy, but it takes a truly heartfelt romance to make an audience feel such heartbreak. Number 2. Worst – Lady Mary Crawley and Richard Carlyle But I'm not ashamed of being what they call a self-made man. I'm proud of it. Is the point of all this to test me in some way? Maybe. It's easy to hate Richard purely on the basis that he's the main obstacle preventing Mary and Matthew from living happily ever after. Even if you took Matthew out of the equation, Richard is a jealous, entitled, and calculating louse. This becomes increasingly apparent to Mary throughout their courtship, but she's forced to stay with Richard out of fear that he may reveal her part in the Kamal Pamuk scandal. Richard only grows more possessive when Mary's feelings for Matthew come to light, threatening to ruin the Crawleys if she doesn't fall in line. Before parting ways for good, Richard tells Mary that he loved her. There's a big difference between loving someone, though, and wanting to basically own them. I'm leaving in the morning, Lady Gransom. I doubt we'll meet again. Do you promise? Number 2. Best – John and Anna Bates Because I love you, Mr. Bates. I know it's not ladylike to say it, but I'm not a lady and I don't pretend to be. When John Bates arrives at Downton, the world has turned its back on him due to the injuries he sustained during the Boer War. Bates Kane doesn't phase Anna, who sees him for the kindly gentleman he is. It's impossible not to be smitten with these two from the second they meet, and especially after Bates brings an ill Anna flowers. Despite being two of the gentlest souls at Downton, a storybook ending doesn't come easily to them. Between John's incarceration and the atrocities Anna experiences at the hands of Mr. Green, their relationship is constantly put through the ringer. Mr. and Mrs. Bates always find their way back to each other, however, culminating with the birth of their son. Happy New Year. Number 1. Worst – John and Vera Bates It is, but then you're all so kind. I'm beginning to understand why my Batesy's got so spoiled. The first major trial John and Anna must endure is the arrival of Vera, John's estranged wife. After John's mother passes away, Vera tracks him down in order to sink her claws into her inheritance. All John wants is the freedom to wed Anna, but Vera refuses to let him be happy. She not only denies him a divorce, but also threatens to reveal Mary's secret if John doesn't stay with her. When John finally fights back, Vera does everything in her power to make sure he remains miserable. This ultimately drives her to consume poison, staging her suicide to look like a murder committed by John. His wife's dead. Someone found her early this morning. Resentful, cunning, and just plain vile, Vera spreads nothing but hate with every breath she takes. Before we get to our best couple, here are some honorable mentions. I'm not 20 either. But I still tremble at the touch of your hands. Me too. I don't know why I said that, really. <laughs> oh, darling. Thank God for you. Would, would you believe me if I said I couldn't live without you? You've done a pretty good job of living without me lately. I've done a very bad job. There are bound to be problems. The way I see it, we both know we're going to get married in the end. We know we're right together. Yes. I suppose we do. That's all I need to hear. Jack Ross, at your service. I'm Rose McClare. 
How do you do? <laughs> Rose, I've been sent to fetch you. But my proposal is a romantic one. I state freely and proudly, Isabel, that I've fallen in love with you. And I want to spend what remains of my life in your company. I believe I could make you happy. At any rate, I, I should very much like the chance to try. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Best, Matthew and Mary Crawley You must pay no attention to the things I say. In a show overflowing with will-they-or-won't-they they tension, no couple left us on edge like Mary and Matthew, the Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy of their generation. These two are meant for each other, but they get off on the wrong foot. Well, they're clearly going to push one of the daughters at me. They'll have fixed on that when they heard I was a bachelor. Lady Mary Crawley. I do hope I'm not interrupting. Even as they grow closer, bad timing, social class, and other love interests continually drive them apart. Once they finally start being honest about their feelings, Matthew pops the question to Mary in one of the most beautiful proposals we've ever seen on television. Will you do me the honor of becoming my wife? Yes. <sighs> this couple's happiness peaks with the birth of their son, which is immediately followed by Matthew's fateful car accident. I want to tell you that I fall more in love with you every day that passes. I'll remind you of that next time I scratch the car. Yeah, <laughs> too. <laughs> After Matthew's death, Downton Abbey was never the same, demonstrating why his relationship with Mary was the heart of the show. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.